You're watching the American Health Journal, the show that brings you the latest information on prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and research from doctors throughout the United States. Watch the American Health Journal each week on this PBS station. Electrophysiology is the biomedical field that deals with the study of electric activity in the body. Device therapy for abnormal heart rhythms is the best way to keep your heartbeat in sync. Dr. Michael Panutic of Hogue Memorial Hospital Presbyterian in Newport Beach explains how electrophysiology is used to treat patients. Electrophysiology is a subsection of cardiology that deals primarily with heart, abnormal heart rhythms and the electrical system of the heart. Electrophysiologists treat abnormal heart rhythms. There are both fast abnormal heart rhythms, which is tachycardia, and slow abnormal heart rhythms, which are bradycardia. Electrophysiologists are trained to do procedures to treat both fast and slow abnormal heart rhythms. Tachycardia can actually um, come out at any time during the patient's lifetime. Some patients develop tachycardias when they're in their teens. Other patients don't develop tachycardias until they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s. It also depends on the tachycardia. Some tachycardias, such as atrial fibrillation, are related to older age, whereas other tachycardias, such as supraventricular tachycardia, actually come out mostly in younger patients. Some patients who have heart disease, such as coronary artery disease or heart failure, are at risk for abnormal heart rhythms that are lethal. Those come from the bottom chambers of the heart, and they're due to the acquired disease, such as the coronary artery disease or the heart attack or the heart failure. For slow heart rhythms, such as bradycardia, patients may have lightheadedness, they may get dizzy, they may feel fatigued during the day, and they may also pass out. Those patients may benefit from a procedure of implantation of a pacemaker. So the benefits out of an EP study and an ablation is that when we do an EP study, as I mentioned, we can actually diagnose what rhythm the patient is having and causing their problems. Once we diagnose that, as I mentioned, we can do the ablation procedure where we burn or cauterize that abnormal tissue and potentially cure the patient of having that arrhythmia. For patients who have slow heart rhythms or bradycardia, by placing a device in, such as a pacemaker, we can relieve them of their symptoms of their slow heart rhythm or bradycardia. What is the success rate for those procedures? It depends on the tachycardia. So a patient who has a tachycardia such as atrial flutter or a supraventricular tachycardia the success rate of an ablation procedure is approximately 95%. So we can cure you 95% of the time with one procedure. However, tachycardia such as atrial fibrillation are much more complex and require a much more complex ablation procedure. That, the success rate of that procedure is approximately 70%. The technology with ablations and EP studies is changing drastically. Um, over the past 10 years, it's changed dramatically especially in the setting of atrial fibrillation ablation. This is an um, arrhythmia that is the most common arrhythmia in the United States. Uh, affects over 3 million people, and patients benefit from atrial fibrillation ablations. The ablation techniques we use now and the, um, the software that we use for mapping and the actual catheters themselves have changed drastically in the last 10 years and will continue to change as we develop good technology. There are currently um, experimental thing, things coming down the pipeline with um, navigation systems as well as catheter directing systems uh, that may be in use uh, down the road.